I can ask you to join with me, ladies and gentlemen, and, uh, and thought... There are over 500 spiritualist churches in Britain, and spiritualism is now a recognised religion. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you will allow their loved ones to come forward, teaching them that there is no death. Its followers believe in an afterlife and that mediums can contact the dead. OK, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> OK. Right, I have a, a gentleman here, and all I know is he... Uh -huh, he passed his spirit well through falling. God, there's such a lot of water around me as well. A lot of water. And it feels as if I could have fallen into this water. This is the feeling. Am I up the back over here? Can you understand that, my dear? Would that make sense to you? But it's a gentleman. I'm shaving all my hair off here. Yes, would exactly. It, would, is that something he would have uh -huh. done? Just shaved all his hair yeah. off like that? Because it's just a sense of doing that. All right. Why is that? <coughs> OK. I'll tell her. Sort the family out. Would you sort the family out? And I've that's, tried. <laughs> OK. That's his message to you. Please sort the family out. Hold on a wee second here. I want to, he's talking about teaching. I'm a teacher. Good. There you go. Thank you. Who's got the candles? I'm seeing can... Me all the time. Right. Just see all the candles being lit there. And again, very happy in the spirit world. And he's just popping in to say, hi, I'm still around. OK? Still around. Now, I've got a hat on my head now. Or a bonnet. OK? Like a cap. The feeling is it's just like a vibration. It's the only way I can describe it. Something vibrating around me which tells me, yes, somebody's here. And it's almost like one of the last things he was able to really make. It's at that point I will ask them to let me be aware of them. And I may be aware of how they died. God, I'm smoking now. I'm getting the sensor. Somebody taking a drawer. You know, who smoked the old woodbine or capstan, the real strong ones? My dad. Because I just got a right whiff of a cigarette here. I then may be aware again of, of, of what they look like. You know, or immediately they may just say, I'm so and so, I'm here. Tell them I'm here. I get the sense of him doing this with his fingers, he's, he's fiddling about with things. There must be a George or a Geordie, because I've just mentioned that. As I heard George, somebody said, Geordie. Yes. OK? Take his love and know that he's still alive, he's still around you. I'll say, God bless you. Know the names. <laughs> you know, I could take them all. Was there any way he could have known any of that information about you? No, I've never ever seen him before, so... When it came to the part, does anyone know anyone that fell into water from a, from a, from a cliff? Well, basically, that for me was that, that is Rory, and no one that I know or anybody that I would know would ever know that about me because he's, he was my son's best friend. So, to me, this is... I am not a sceptic anymore. Gordon Smith is a medium in demand. He now travels to London regularly to do private sittings. His home from home in the capital is the historic spiritual mission in Notting Hill. Actually coming up to stay in the church, it was just like coming home. So many of the great mediums have worked here. Everybody who was anybody within spiritualism, mediums that I've read about, it's actually considered a great honour to be invited here to work. Gordon doesn't charge for sittings, but there's a long waiting list. Ros Katanak, who runs the church, is also the keeper of Gordon's diary. He's an excellent medium. He's an honest medium with great integrity, which to me is almost as important as the quality of the mediumship. Well, the two go together, or should, should. As long as he doesn't get spoilt, and I don't think he will get spoilt, and I know he's going to get a few very short kicks from spirit, should he try it, but he won't. He won't. I'm absolutely certain about that. And uh, we are very blessed to have him. Very. And, um, you know. Do you guess a lot of people then, Ross, really get for sittings with Gordon? Oh, yes. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yes, I do indeed. Um, and may, once they know that he's going to be around, yes. And you just have to use your intelligence or what little you've got to uh, sort out the, 
wheat from the chaff. And that's really what it amounts to. I must have a sitting. I do need a sitting. Then you realise that someone's in trouble. Colin and Pat Marr lost their son a year ago. His name was uh, Colin John Marr. Um, he was going home one night, walking across a zebra crossing. A car apparently ran into him, just carried on. So they never found the person who no. did this? No. no. He was a school teacher, well loved by his pupils. He ran the um, first year football team at the school, a king footballer himself. Very, very popular, knew absolutely everybody, very enthusiastic and just so full of life for her, it, it to have been taken the way it was. In the greater scheme of things, I'm still a Catholic and still believe in Catholicism, but to us, our son, who we really loved, has been taken away from us. If it's God's will, then at the moment, I'm not very friendly with God. Can I just take your hand? Yeah. Sometimes I Gordon say. says he knows nothing about Colin and Pat, not even their names. To do this just to make a, a link. All right. Oh, yeah. Now, there's a young man and an older woman, OK? So it's like a boy and his grandmother. Yes. Right. Does the name of John Mayer or John Marr make some... mean something to you? Um, that was the second name. All right. John was the second name. All and right. Marr is their surname. Oh, well, if that makes sense, yeah, I'd heard it as John Mayer or John, John Mayer. Marr. Or Marr. Something. Right, yeah. OK. Uh, all right, then, come on. Uh -huh, I'll tell her. There's a certain kind of rose or a certain kind of flower That's that you right. give to him. Yes. And he says, I know about it, I still get them. He and does. there's one that you put beside a picture as well. That's right. And he says, I'm very aware of that. He's so much around you. And have they indeed? Oh, is there a Hornsley church or a Horns... Hornsley. Horns? Is there yeah. a church? Because I'd heard it's Hornsley church. Yeah. Or, or... Yeah, no, my, my parents used to live in Hornsey. It's a place called Hornsey. All oh, right. Such a lot of family members around you. Yes. Okay. As I mentioned, mother. I've also got to see grandmother. My God, mm. she was a character. This mm. woman could have. I, I don't know what I want to say about her, but I just know you did not mess with this woman. Mm. She was like the leader of the the yeah. family, yeah. and she's coming forward at the moment to say that yes, you're doing the right thing, and she's talking about your family that are still around you. Somebody wanted to stop smoking just the other day, but they thought oh, I'll try it, but I wouldn't bother. Does that make sense? <laughs> Very much so. Well, yeah. I've just given up as we came into this year, and it's oh, killing me. So <laughs> if, if you've done it good, if you've no, I have uh, not yet. Oh well, you'll do it at some point. Don't worry about it. But again, it's just their way of saying they know your thoughts or they yeah. know your thinking. And, and and I have a football, and he's he's bouncing the ball here. Yeah, he's he's yeah. holding the ball. In fact, he must have just loved anything to do with yeah. the sport and yeah. football and things he did. like that. He's a but I, footballer. Yeah, I, I know you have an Irish accent, but there's yeah. somebody here shouting Paddy. Okay, mm -hmm. Paddy, Paddy, Paddy. There's a guy in the spirit world. Paddy, yeah. but I've also got to talk about Pat or Patricia as well. So there's Pat as a man and Pat as a woman, woman. OK? Yeah. Yeah. And I've got to mention both of them here. And there's a real shindig going on over on the other side. There's such a lot of family, I feel. And what they're trying to say to you is, we have your son here. He's OK. He's OK. You've sent out these thoughts. You've been asking so much. What, what are you doing? OK, bless you. Uh, really? Right. The 15th of May, I've got to say to you, is something, I don't know what it means, yeah, but the 15th of May date. is an important date. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. What are you writing? It's as if he's writing something up. But it's a, I'm on a computer. Yes. Okay. And he, he was typing away here. It's, it's the stuff of his that is still left. His writings, yeah. his stuff oh, yes. that he's yeah. put together. Yes. There's an essay or there's something. It, yeah. It's actually educational, what he's been studying or what he's been doing. What? I don't know if it's Colin or... Is a name like that? Colin, Colin? was his name. Sorry? Colin was his name. Oh, was that his name? Yeah. Colin. I just heard it whispered, sorry. And thanks for the candles, Mum. Thank you very much, as you said, for the candles, Mum. It means a lot. It's his way of trying to let you know that he's still he's alive. Still alive. Yes. Still alive. Oh, yeah, it's very enlightening, yeah, yeah. It's wonderful, because we know now he is at peace. He's yeah, with his grandmother. Yeah, it does give comfort, I must admit. And know. his name, everything, he's 
he's got everything spot on. His writing, he was a school teacher. There's a lot of writings, his dissertation. He was in the process of writing a book. All those things, there's nothing he didn't get. He couldn't have known no. the, the things he did know, so. Yeah. I mean, he even got his full name right. Yeah. You know, which is amazing, you know, considering they don't know who you are, never met you before. May the 15th is very significant. That was the day his grandmother died, five days before her birthday. And what he said about the shrine, lots of people say to me there's too many candles and too many flowers and at his headstone. And he said, thanks for the candles, Mum. So I know I'm doing the right thing now. It's not a shrine, it's somewhere I can go and find peace with him. So, it's lovely. Could you roll your sleeve up, Gordon? I'm going to put on this blood pressure machine. Gordon's growing reputation as an accurate medium has led to work with psychical researchers like Trish Robertson. It makes contact with your head and it gives me off your brainwaves. <laughs> Trish carries out investigations into all things paranormal. It's the most important question we can ask. Do we survive physical death? Do our personalities and intellects survive? Good afternoon. May I press the blood pressure monitor on Gordon? Gordon seems to be able to tap into some other consciousness and impart information that he couldn't normally know. What he can do is definitely unexplained. Do you believe yourself that there is a spirit world that we go somewhere else after we die? It's not a matter of belief, it's a matter of evidence. I always say I will only deal in evidence. And I've had many cases of people, for example, who have spoken to someone during, during a particular day, had a conversation, discovered a day or two later that person had actually died. And I'm talking about credible witnesses. These things happen. Trish wants Gordon to help investigate ghostly goings-on at a local pub. But first, she needs to find out more from the landlord. I understand you have a, a paranormal phenomena in the building? Yes, there's noises or bumps in the night, whichever way you'd want to put it. Uh -huh. um, there's been uh, quite a few witnesses to noises coming through the ceiling. Actually, hearing the noises in yeah. the ceiling. Yeah. And it was a dragging noise, as if it was a big table no. being dragged. There was actually four staff in it at the one time, right. and all heard it together. I definitely heard footsteps up there. Can you give me an idea of roughly how many footsteps you think you I heard? Or? Don't know. I didn't wait to count. No, but I mean, was it like no. two, three, four, oh, five? Oh, it was three or four. Three or four. Uh -huh. Would you say there were heavy footsteps? Like a man or a woman or a child? I would say it was an adult. You would say it was an adult? Aye. David thought that me and Eddie were like, tapping the side of the bar. So me and Eddie stuck our hands up right away, and then that was it. The three years were freaked out then. Mm -hmm. When people report a feeling of presence, it's very important as a psychical researcher to listen to what the people have to say. You will often find that the biggest skeptics are the people who have not investigated a single case in their life. I get actually a bit scared and stuff about it, because mm. you don't really want to believe in stuff like that. If I can take you through and show you where right. everything's been happening okay. first. Um, it's actually an area upstairs. Right. Not the easiest thing in the world, is it? Wow. Look at that old space. There's quite a, what I would call an atmosphere here. We will be getting out instruments and we can actually measure this, but to me, there's like a column of it's, cold it's always, energy. Yeah, it's always funny. There's never really actually a draft, but it's always freezing just around about just, here whenever it you was walk like walk, It was like walking into it and walking out of it again. Want to try that, David? You might not feel it, it might just be me. Do I feel, you feel it? it? Yeah. The dragging sound and the knocking sound that I was talking about uh -huh. is actually from about here. Ah. And how's the temperature, David? The temperature's down to 13.6. It's dropped rapidly from about 16. In a short time, that's good evidence. It's, it's uh, rapidly dropping. Do you believe in ghosts? A healthy respect. A healthy respect, I think. 
Have you got any theories yourself as to a family it could be connected to, or um, a name? Or... Yes, uh, there's several families that were here for at least three or four generations. There was the Waddle family from about 1800 through to the 1870s, and then there was the Reed family, who was here. Whoa, I just got a big shiver there. <laughs> a big shiver, that did scare me there. Can we go back down? <laughs> What, when you mentioned that family's oh, name? Oh, the family read. Oh, no, yeah, it's just actually strange. God, I've never experienced that before. Really? Yeah, i never experienced it quite like that. I don't know, did you not feel anything? No. No, maybe it's just me being paranoid then. There's an actual anomaly there in the photograph, which could be an orb. That's directly above where that chair and set of boots are. Some people say it's dust, it could be energy. There's no scientific proof of what it may be. But clearly, there's something strange come up in the photograph. Gordon has arrived at the Thistle Inn to try and solve the mystery of the ghostly footsteps. It's almost like memories. I'm being pulled to where there's, I don't know, there's an activity around here of some kind. I can hear things, whispering voices, but it's not spirit, it's like ghostly voices. They're memories. I don't know why, but this area, it's kind of I was in front of the fireplace, but I was drawn, I don't know, to the side a bit. Which side, Gordon? Kind of my, my right-hand side. OK. OK, yeah. that's, yeah. that's where I... Almost, well, there's a chair there, but I couldn't sit on it, but I felt around this area there was a, a really strong atmosphere at first. Mm -hmm. I heard voices. Male, female? There was... Two names called out, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's the same name or right. if it's if it's a first and last name or two different names. Mm -hmm. But it was Jimmy Reed. Jimmy Reed. Jimmy. Reed, Jimmy. Reed, Jimmy. Reed, Jimmy. Reed, Jimmy. Reed, Jimmy. Reed, Jimmy. I get a chip. Shall we wander over here and see if there's anything? Mm. Yeah, it's very difficult when you're standing here and there are people around you. And opening myself up as a medium, I mean, immediately I start picking up people's relatives, well, which are not relative to this building. So you uh -huh. can go go uh -huh. away. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and there is a relevance somewhere to a fireplace, but it's that one. Mm -hmm. The more I look at this, the more no, I've got to go back to that fireplace. Something is not right about that fireplace. Mm -hmm. They're showing me it back as it would have been, and that's not how they remember it. You say you're picking up names, but just say them anyway in case that they're relevant. OK, the other name I heard was Lizzie, but there was a Mac, and I wasn't sure if it was McCutcheon or Macaulay or something like that. Just something it's a name Macaulay that means something to the landlord. James Reed was actually a gentleman that owned the place between the 1880s and 1950s, but the fact he mentioned a Lizzie, a Lizzie, it's actually Liz, Liz McDonald was the wife of the owner that had it before us, and he died the other year. Um, so it's interesting that that was mentioned. There was actually a relative of mine. So I've actually got relatives that had the place for the last 30 odd years. Strange. There's two, there's, I think there's Balls of light in my head, eh? <laughs> um, and it's funny, the fireplace he's talking about, when we're downstairs in the lounge bar, the fireplace that's in there was actually taken from in, from that space just a year and a half ago. And we actually cleaned it up and the, the, to the tiles and everything that's there, as you can see just now. So that's an original fireplace that was probably put in by those people back in the 1880s. So the, it's, it's really quite... I, I'm enjoying this. <laughs> Great stories to tell around the bar. <laughs> and it's a sense of... Like that, as though right. whoa, somebody has either experienced a feeling of somebody walking up here from downstairs when there's been nobody up here. Just a sense of... But it's just... Honestly, it's, it's like an etheric... I don't know. I mean, I don't know the term for it. There's, there's something left over from the past. There's no spirit behind it that wants revenge or no. says, get out of my house. There's nothing like oh. that. Just a wee Glasgow ghost. <laughs> <laughs> They're all right. They're OK. They do not have an active ghost 
poltergeist, call it what you will. It's merely energies of the past, happy memories that are left over as a residue in this place. Just hearing that really did just knock me for six. Absolutely knock me for six. With him mentioning um, a family name, it's just really brought all this out in me. It's, it's stuff that, that, that I'm just really speaking of feelings just now. Um, I really don't know what it is. But I'll calm down in a minute and I'll start talking sensible again. Well, if I've ever talked sensible in the past. But uh, it, it's, it's something I'm not used to. through so many times now, I can't imagine that he wouldn't come through, especially on a one-to-one. -one. He's eager, obviously, to be in touch with us and to reassure us that he is with us. Greta and her husband, Andrew, are traveling to London for their sitting with Gordon. You still have that longing to see him, but we won't get that. <laughs> So hearing him is the next best thing. Gordon says he knows nothing about Greta and Andrew, not even their names. Just come over and have a seat. OK. Um, nice to you. you just have a seat Thank and you. tell me nothing at the moment. Uh, that's why. I don't really want to no, just get any conversation. It's better for you if I get you evidence, of you know. It is, yes. Uh, I don't really. Have you had a setting before? Yes. Right, so you know yeah. what to expect. Yes. Yeah. I mean, at worst, that will become a conversation. We'll have a chat. Yes. Yeah. And I will know very quickly uh, whether I've established a communication mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. Can I just take one of your hands? Sometimes I do this, uh, and it's just through impression. Sometimes I need to hold somebody's hand. Yeah. Sometimes I don't. And uh, there are times I just do this to get maybe a, a sense or a vibration from the person. OK. All right, a, yeah, as soon as I take your hand, there's a young man just coming in like this. All right. What's the name? All right. Andrew? I've got to shout Andrew. Who's Andrew? Who's He's just shouting Andrew, Andrew, Andrew. Where are you taking me? All right, it's taking me immediately. Very, very active, very fast mind, this, this young man. Quite, you know, dynamic. I feel really warm. If he comes into a room, you know he's in a room. Bang. OK, where are you taking me here? I'm going out to the countryside with him, though. Um, I don't know if I'm in hills or uh, sort of moors, but I'm not in Scottish rugged hills. I'm in rolling. No. Mm. You know, hills like the Dales, basically. OK, he's yes. taking me up the Dales. Uh, happy birthday. Mum, he's yes, saying, OK? Thank you. And I don't know if it's Margaret or Margarita, but there's a name like that that's been said, G Margareta? I'm right, no, no. No, 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 no. no. no, no. It no. certainly sounds like Margaret. I wouldn't Margaret, change it to no. Margaret. I was just... Um, I have a connection with... Rita, Gre Greta? Greta? Greta, that's me. Are you right, Greta? Yes. Well, I thought it was Margarita, oh, but he's, of course he's explaining I didn't get that, that connection. Back yes, of course. OK. Anyway, but it, I just get this lovely sense of him very, very close to you just now. And he's showing me here, all oh, right, don't, we don't need to do that. There are so many times you've gone over how he died. Why did that? And it's just as though there's this constant picture, this constant torture. And he said, stop doing that. You've got to stop looking at how he actually went to the spirit world. You're never going to change it. And it's, mm-hmm. All oh, right, bless you. There's a motor car he's shown me here, OK? Um, and there's some sense of passing to the spirit world very, very quickly we impact. But we don't need to go into that because you know how he passed to the spirit yeah. world. Yeah. All I need to inform you is that he's gone beyond that. And therefore, don't look at his body as being the way it is. His mind, his spirit, his consciousness has actually moved on from that. Where do you take me to? Is that Elk? Elkley? Yes. Does that make sense? Elkley? Yeah. Well, Elkley is near well, where we live. OK, that's <coughs> something that's been mentioned to me, Elkley. Uh, and it's actually been said with an accent like that, Elkley. That's how I said I it. Actually, that's how I know it's in. Elkley. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to mention a dog to you as well. Now, I don't know if it's like a, a Jack Russell type thing, but it's a small oh. dog like that. Does that make sense? He always wanted well, one. He didn't have one, but he always wanted one. He a dog one. around him in the spirit world yes. anyway, so... It was always a Jack Russell. It's just running around my feet. OK, mention my watch. 
okay, there's a watch that somebody yes. has been wearing or they, they've put it on and taken it off. Yes. And he says, I just wish they would wear it. <laughs> is that, just tell him to keep Still it on. <laughs> okay, we'll get it fixed because he's, he knows about this. Why is that? He's got such an active mind. Now I feel as though I'm reading books, but I'm also doing everything. It's as though I could read, I could watch telly, I have headphones on, and I'm sure doing everything yeah. like this. And I just feel this whole personality. Now, he's doing something funny with his hair here. It's as though he's laughing, right? I don't know what he did with his hair just before he passed it. It's been a while, but he did something radical. There's a real change he to it. And he's laughing at it, OK? <laughs> Talking about the tattoo. Oh, yes. Remember the tattoo yes. or the tattoos, OK? Because it's, it's important. Mm. Uh, <laughs> the gallery. It's actually a gallery at home of photographs. It's almost yes. like, you know, mentioned the gallery yes. that you've started yeah. to, to work with. God, everything was going so well. He's just said, everything was, I'm so, he's apologising, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, <laughs> everything was going so well. Um, and he just wants you to know that really and truly, it's like he doesn't feel what you think he felt. What you need to know is, is that he's no longer suffering, or he isn't suffering. And it's Nige, he's, and that's, Nige. It's, it's not saying Nige, he's saying it's Nige. It's Nige, that's what we're called. He says it's Nige, and tell them I am so much a part of them, still so much a part of them. And he's laughing and he has the most marvellous laugh. Was... And you've listened to him laughing, there's something you've watched, or it's like either yes. a videotape or whatever, and he says, did you remember I was sitting laughing there? Yeah. So he was with you when you were doing that, OK? Mention, I've got to mention, see the sunglasses? I think it is sunglasses, because somebody has been looking at his sunglasses, <laughs> OK? And these are just simple things to say. Look, he's still alive. He's he knows these week. things since he has gone to the spirit world. You know, there's, you know, I'm saying to you like I know this, but you know the lane? There's yes. a little lane yes, next to where you live. <clears throat> and he's taking me down this lane. Yes. Is there and, and that's what he says, it's just walking down that lane many times. You know the lane, I'm in the lane with you many, many times. Yes. And I've got to say, do not stand at my grave and weep. Now, this is a card that somebody has given and you to read. just written that this week. Ah, well, do his not... His sister. That's, well, she, again, it's his way of just saying that he knows about it, OK? Right, I have to tell you where he's standing and you'll know it. And it's like a massive stone on these hills, on these dales. But there's a huge big stone that stands on its own. But he's standing right up the top as though he's looking. You can see for miles. That's what it feels like. Imagine, if you can, that that's however or wherever. That's so difficult to understand what this, the dimensions of this, because I don't. But I just know that there's some, some way, like a window that opens up and they get through. Yeah. And they can still hear us. They can still see us. They can still sense us. And when you're really, really at rock bottom, just give him a shout and you will feel his presence, I'm sure. Yeah. But I hope that means something to you. It does, thank you very much. You're more than welcome. Yes, it's wonderful, thank you very much. Thank you. Bless you. Yes, OK. You feel him every bit as much as I do. If you feel you need to go and see a medium, fine. But it's not something I would do regularly. You have a life after a death, and you've got to build on that. And now, let's give a big, warm San Francisco welcome to Gordon Smith! Hello. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And it really is my pleasure to come and serve the spirit world here in San Francisco. I do hope today that I can be accurate and get some evidence for you from your loved ones. Stop to your right. OK. Second lady in, may I speak to you? Sure. OK. I have a lady in the spirit world, OK? It's a mother lady in the spirit world, OK? And she's talking to me about, all right, the 17th as being important. Oh, yes. My mother's birthday is on the 17th. My okay. wedding anniversary is on the 17th. And my sister passed away on the 17th. OK. <laughs> That's fine. All right. My dear, I'm just seeing the name of Steph being written up above your head. Would you understand who Steph would be? 
S-T-E-P-H. Stephanie, my niece here. Oh, well, that'll do me fine. <laughs> OK. And somebody must have a rosary that belonged to the lady or that was passed down in the family. Can you understand that? We both do. Oh, that's fine, because she knows about that, and she just wants to let you know that she's been around you. I've got to say thank you for the flowers, because somebody gave her flowers in her memory today or yesterday. Her son gave her flowers yesterday. There you go. <laughs> well, and she just wants you to know that, because you're still very doubtful of this whole thing. You are? A little. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. Okay. Bless you, darling. Right. Mm -hmm. I've also got to say happy birthday in the month of May. Okay? Stephanie. Is that yours? Oh, God bless. Yeah, That's lovely. It's wonderful when the spirit world can come through this close. Tell her I know about the house, but there's a lot of work getting done in one of the houses, okay? They're working on my kitchen. Well, that's it, she knows about that. <laughs> and that's just her way of saying, I'm still alive, I'm still around, and I can still see what's happening here and now. And there's the name of Judy or Julie, I've got to shout. Julie, Julie her daughter. The name of John has been written up here as well. She has a son-in-law, John. That's fine. Why is that, my darling? All right. We're very, very close to the anniversary time, OK? And this is why she's come, because so many thoughts were going out to her. All right. Take her love, and I'll say God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> now, all right. Again, I get the, a lovely sense of a lady here who's trying to keep a family very much together just now, my dear. Would that make sense? Yes. Okay. I've got to say Marie or Maria. Oh, my mother's name is Maria. Okay, that's fine. She's just whispering it in my ear. Yes. Okay. Marguerite or Margarita? Margar What's name? Margarita. <laughs> okay. Margarita, can I just very quickly say to you that they're talking about a whole new career or a whole change of what you've been doing, dear? Really? Yeah. And there's a baby in the spirit world as well, and it goes back a generation, but the little baby's with the grandmother, and she's saying, I have the child here as well. Okay? Oh. Christina, Christina. <laughs> I lost a baby. Okay. Oh okay. Oh well, they have the child with them, okay? <laughs> Bless you. All right. I think people are looking for hope getting evidence that there is a life after death alleviates a heck of a lot of that fear. And you're no longer left with a belief, you're actually left with a knowledge and understanding. Michelle. That's me. Oh, well done. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> Michelle. I love when they do that. Michael. Somebody's just shouted Michael. Who's Michael? Mm -hmm. People like me, mediums, can only give people a glimpse of that life to come. George. Somebody's just shouted George to you. Name OK, George. Skeptics are going to be skeptics anyway. And it's not my job to convince the skeptics. Do you understand who Kathy is? It's my daughter. Ah, well, she's just holding the hand of Kathy. They were so OK? Much. Just Kathy tell her. my mother's caregiver. OK. Someone's planning to get married. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, my, I think my boyfriend's about to propose. <laughs> Is he here? <laughs> there are no secrets. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing if I really didn't have an understanding of this. It's not a belief. It's a knowledge that life goes on and on. I just know it happens. Yeah, I absolutely know it.
Sorry, my mind is not working. It's okay. <laughs> Fabulous. Fabulous. Now that's medium ship. That's oh the my. kind of medium ship I would love to have. Oh, now that's medium ship. <laughs> so exquisite. <laughs> it's a, so loving too.